Okay, so the weight became a big issue there, but uh, we're going to move on a little bit later to when he talks about how he wanted a lawyer in that room with his daughter for the second interview, and let's break down why that might be the case. So joining me is former LAPD Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey. Cheryl, great to see you. Uh, you know, I, you know where I'm going. I'm going with the police interrogation tape. That's what I want to talk about right now. So. The fact that her father went on the stand and said he wished he had a lawyer, it seemed to suggest, and what we've seen throughout this case, is that the defense has been saying that the police use improper, ta improper tactics to get that uh, statements from the defendant. Did you see anything that was alarming to you? Well, you know, I mean, listen, she's a child, so she may not have known to even ask for a lawyer to be present. But I would think, now I don't know that there was anything improper, but I would think just to make sure you don't, you'd err on the side of caution, you would make sure that someone was there to represent her um, so that you don't have these kind of issues down the road so that something isn't said where uh, it's later thrown out. And I understand, you know, police want to lock you into a statement. They want to get uh, your first thoughts before you have an opportunity to develop other angles and stories, right? And that's the question. Now that's the question, having, right? Now they're having to defend it. Yeah. Right, right. And I want to break this down with you. I'm happy we have you here. Let's play a little bit more of the father, and then we're going to break down some more of his testimony. Let's. Uh, this is from yesterday. Yeah, it's a difficult position for the father there, Cheryl. But uh, just to go back to that tape, the question, the million-dollar question is, have you ever seen a case where you have a teenager or you have a young suspect who's put in an interrogation room, and they end up saying things that are not true that hurt them, that are basically convicting them, uh, that are not true because they they're feel pressured to give an answer, maybe because they feel they want to give the police what they want, maybe they think they can get out of there. Have you seen a situation like that? Well, listen, we know this to be true, and yes, I've seen examples of where um, a defendant, a suspect, um, someone who's maybe not yet uh, arrested but just being questioned will say whatever they have to say either because they know they're dirty, they're guilty, right? They did this thing we're talking about, or because there's trying to elude um, authorities. And so that's not uncommon for a teenager or full grown adult. Yeah, no, I, look, it's difficult for anybody. And especially, you know, the thing is, is just as we watch her, this 18 year old being questioned by uh, detectives, I mean, she did say these things in the interrogation tape. She said to her father, I maybe tried to cremate the baby a little. That's a big problem for the defense. Now, they can say she was coerced all they want, but that's something the jury's going to hold on to. I'm getting word that we can go live right now into this courtroom. So this is the first witness of the day. This is the defendant's English teacher. Let's hear what he has to say. Okay, let's break some of that down. Uh, joining me also here on Law & Crime this morning is criminal defense attorney Lakai Vinson. Lakai, great to see you. Uh, this line of questioning where they're bringing out these witnesses to talk about her character and talk about if she's a good person, what she was like, what do you think about it? Well, I think that the witnesses do a good job outlining who she is, what their expectations are, and just generally that she's a good person. So I think that the defense does a good job having those witnesses testify as to the good person that she supposedly is. Do you think, Lakai, that the prosecution has witnesses in their back pocket to talk about her being a bad person, to talk about her being not a, a, a great human being as she's being portrayed? Because that's the danger there, that the prosecution then has the ability to put in bad character evidence. Or do you think the defense knows the state has none of those witnesses and they're doing this for a reason? Well, I think the defense is assuming the same thing that I likely am, is that they don't necessarily have anybody to come and testify about whether or not there's any bad character evidence or any bad flaws as it relates to the defendant. And I would assume anybody that they have that had the ability to even remotely testify about that would be somebody that we've already seen. Now, of course, they wouldn't have had the opportunity to testify about that character evidence because they can only rebut whatever character evidence has already been put on by the defense. But I think it would possibly or potentially be a witness that we've already seen the state use on their part of the case. Now, Cheryl, let me ask you this. Here's the f interesting part about it as we're watching this. She's not a typical suspect, right? This is a different kind of uh, defendant. This is a different kind of suspect that you'd be investigating an 18-year-old girl uh, for a murder charge, right? Right. And listen, I mean, she's a great person. She's a good person. And sometimes good people do bad things, right? I'm always bothered when someone tries to dirty up 
she's not really a victim in this case, but she kind of is, right? Because she's a young girl who was in an unfortunate situation and handled it poorly, but did what her 18-year-old mind told her to do. And so when you try to beat her up and show that she's not a nice person or she's not a good person, and therefore, whatever the conclusion is to be drawn, for me, it's problematic. Well, it's tough. I mean, look, on one hand, 18-year-old girl, she gets pregnant. On the other hand, look what she's facing. She's facing a serious charge for for ending the life of a newborn baby. So this is a tough battle here for both sides and tough for the jury to ultimately consider when they go into deliberations. I got word that the judge is trying to work out some microphone issues that are happening in the courtroom. So while that happens, they're taking a break. Let's take a break on our end. When we come back down, we'll break it all down and we'll let you know what's happening.